The good news is this is an entire video dedicated to me gushing about Heartstopper. The bad news is I finally caught COVID. <laughs> okay, okay, before I get to the gushing, I'm fine. I'm home in Minnesota. There's a cat over there. There's sun out there. I'm isolated in here. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. Could you hear it in my voice? Could you hear it? I, I'm ill. I'm so ill. Because I've been in isolation, I've truly been alone. I've been binging a few shows, and I just want to gush about a super duper gay one. The entire internet's been talking about Heartstopper, and I've naturally gotten a lot of people being like, what do you think about it? Tell us your opinions. And you know what? For once in my goddamn life, I want to tell you everything I think about it. Because it made me feel so many good things that I feel like sometimes I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm moving. It just looks like I'm naked, honestly. Where was I? Oh yeah, gay love. I'm not gonna lie, I was really hesitant to watch this show because it felt like it wasn't for me. When I saw the trailer, when I watched like the first 10 minutes of the first episode, it really just felt like it wasn't meant for me. It wasn't made for me. I didn't know if I would relate to it or if it was something that I was even going to enjoy. It's based in high school. There's a lot of cutesy animations around when people are catching feelings. They have like literal animations going around them. Leaves twirling, sparks flying, stars zooming around their heads. I just couldn't tell if I was going to like it. So I kind of put it off until I was you know, just kind of forced to because I'm trapped here. <laughs> what else am I gonna fucking do? But I'm so happy I did. It was just the most heartwarming show I have seen in years. I, you know, it's not one of those shows you can spoil necessarily. So if you haven't seen it, just listen to me gush about gay love for a little bit. <laughs> It's basically all I want to do. All you really need to know is it centers around a young gay teen in high school in the UK and a crush that he develops and the relationship he has with that crush. What I really loved about this show was that it continued to surprise me in that I, I think I've been trained to expect that all queer programming is going to have some like major devastating plot points, some real painful, hard hitting storyline that's going to really just like set me up to set me down. And in a way, this show almost never did that. Every episode I kept thinking so far ahead being like, oh no, I know how this is gonna play out. X, Y, and Z is gonna happen and he's gonna be devastated. He's gonna hate himself. He's gonna hate himself. Rejection, bullying, no friends, horrible, horrible, horrible. Every episode, it just, it got me to that point where I kept thinking in such a negative way. And I'm so happy that it almost never got me there. It almost always was just filled with pure queer joy. And that like never happens. <laughs> that like never happens in movies or in TV shows. I also really adore that this show went to the effort to cast real teenagers in real teenage roles. I know that doesn't sound like it should be praised, but you would be surprised how many of your favorite actors are like 29 playing a 16 year old. I think this felt very real because of that, because I saw them as like real high schoolers, as real kids, as as people really experiencing this for the first time. It felt, felt real. It felt real. It was very cute. I don't know. Charlie Spring is absolutely freaking adorable. I relate to him so much in the sense that he is, he both is like the nicest person, not me calling myself the nicest person in the world. <laughs> he's very sweet. You can tell he's very thoughtful. He's thinking constantly more about everyone else than he is himself. He's where he's worried that he's always like a burden. He's worried that he's too stressful to his friends, too much, too much, too much, too much. Am I saying too much? Am I not saying enough? Am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? He's just always overthinking and I relate really 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 a lot to that really really a lot to that what and he's just like a hopeless romantic you can tell that he just he just like wants someone to love him and it's very again it's just very endearing it's precious it's adorable we love young gay love and then on the other hand nick nelson who's like the sporty closeted boy in school i relate so much to that too i felt like that in school too so i felt like i was seeing I was seeing my life played out on a British television show. <laughs> Not to mention his last name is Connor. Coincidence? 
I think not. I really relate to Nick Nelson because when I was doing sports in school, I had this this strange pull too of like me knowing I had feelings for boys, but also never being told that like an athletic person could could be gay. I don't know. Like there was there just wasn't representation, and I always felt so confused just being me and being around the people that I was around. Not that I was around tons of to toxic masculinity, but like the show depicts toxic young high school boys really well. I wasn't around that a lot, but I was around it enough to be like, I don't think I'm that and I don't like that, but I also don't know how to stop that without feeling vulnerable and like a target myself. So in a weird way in high school, I would go under the radar and just like let bad things happen, let people be themselves because I didn't want anyone to look at me. I didn't want anyone to see the gay that was hiding beneath the cross country jersey. Singlet? Jersey? What? So it was so endearing to see Nick, the star of the rugby team, stand up for the nerds or the social outcasts or just in general be nice to everyone. I loved seeing that played out. I don't know if it's realistic in any way, but I loved seeing it play out like that. It was really wonderful because that's how it should be. I love, love, love all the cast. I like Charlie's friend group. I like um, all the girls at the separate school as well. Tao, L, Tara, Darcy, all of them. I think I think it was a really well-rounded show. With anything, the depiction of Tara and Darcy's relationship was like the most brave thing in the entire show. Like when you really think about it, those two came out as a couple and Tara came out as a lesbian in front of her entire school in such a spontaneous act. And then she was a safe space for other queer kids in the show. People were coming out to her, people were confiding her, telling her secrets, and she always would keep them and again, just be a safe person to tell that to. And just like, what a great character. What a great person. We all need that in our lives. Again, I can't emphasize enough. It was just so cute. The friendships, the relationships, everything was so freaking sweet. The show was both very realistic, but also kind of idealistic at the same time. Like it was the most idealistic, realistic show I had seen about my high school in a while. Does that make any sense? It is the anti-euphoria is what I'm trying to say. It, I relate to almost nothing about the Euphoria High School. I relate to everything about the Heartstopper Academy. I was a very innocent child. I had very innocent friends. Like our idea of a crazy night would be staying over at someone's house and watching a bunch of movies and eating a bunch of junk food until two in the morning. Like that was what I did all throughout high school. Didn't have a sip of alcohol, never tried drugs, nothing. Only kissed a few girls, but it was like a single kiss and it was done very, very something. And I just, I just couldn't help but see my life in it or see a version of my life I wish I had had within it. The teachers in the show, the way that they reacted to Charlie being an out gay kid, the way that they provided safe spaces, no judgment from the rugby coach, the teacher that let him hide from lunch when he was getting bullied, Nick's mom, like the whole thing. It was just, it was how the world should be. And it was a really nice escape to fall into. And I think the more that people are exposed to positive storytelling, to almost again, like an idealistic version of the world, the more the world may replicate that. The more kids will learn that that is possible, that this is how things should be handled, you know, that you shouldn't bully kids. Homophobia is not okay. Racism is not okay. Bigotry is not okay. When it happens, it's called out. The person is frankly like, publicly shamed and learns to never do it again. No, I can't. No, I want to be comfortable with this ain't happening. <laughs> it looks like I'm getting buried. <laughs> it's funny because I hated the animations at first. I thought it was like really cheesy and childish, but it really did help you kind of like zoom in on those moments of emotional height. Like I think back to the first few times that I ever held a boy's hand, that I was ever close to a boy that I liked, that I ever kissed a boy. It was visceral. There was visible sparks and stars and hearts flying around me when it happened. It's just, it's such an unexplainable feeling. The shakiness of like hoping that you don't get rejected and in, in the sense of queer people, the shakiness and just hoping the other person is queer too and is into it. It's exciting. It's frightening. It's beautiful. It's terrifying. It's ugly. It's, is, it's everything. It's everything. 
everywhere all at once. I also weirdly, and this is a hot take, I weirdly relate to Ben, who was the initial boy that Charlie liked, kind of like the closeted bully, although he's horrible. Like, <laughs> he's horrible. It's not that I can relate to it, but I, I get it because being in high school, feeling like an other, feeling different then, is the worst feeling. It's terrifying, and you will do things out of character just to preserve yourself. And Ben being such a fucking asshole, he was such a little dick. I get it, because it was pure fear. It was self-hatred, it was shame, and all of it personified in his moments of cruelty towards sweet little baby Charlie. And it's not right, but I understand it. And I had a lot of empathy for him because I'm like, he's he's clearly, he clearly doesn't understand that this is something he can't change about himself. This is himself and he is projecting all these negative emotions onto Charlie, making Charlie feel like the other when clearly he feels like the other. It's just, it's classic, isn't it? It was just a really sweet show. I just really needed it. It was one of those moments where I thought, why don't I watch more happy television? Why aren't joyous queer relationships played out more on the big screen, on the silver screen. I need more positive queer shows, more uplifting gay programs. Because this shouldn't be a groundbreaking feeling, but I really did leave that show in tears, first of all. I, I cried so much. Like, <laughs> I haven't cried from being happy that much in a long time. I was getting texts. I wasn't, no one cared. So yeah, from my, um, from my little pit of despair over here, I'm fine. It's okay. My little illness bubble in here, it was such a lovely little show. And I'm so glad that I got renewed for a couple more seasons. Take notes, people who are writers, directors, producers. We want more positive, uplifting, LGBT content. Yeah, it really warmed my cold, cold heart. And I could not talk about it. Anyways, if you guys have seen it, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you've seen any other wonderful LGBTQ plus programs that you think everyone else would like to watch, leave those in the comments down below. Click the like button, leave a comment. Da, 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 da. Anyways, I'm gonna go rest up, get better. I hope you feel well. I hope you're doing well. I love ya, and I'll see ya super soon. Bye. Your boy finally caught the coronavirus. No! I'm also so dramatic. <laughs> Not to twist this into a way to make myself feel very good about myself, but I did test positive for Rona and thus stopped a bunch of people from going to a wedding who also tested positive for Rona. So really, I'm a hero. Congratulate me, praise me in the comments down below. Thank you.